Hi guys, Raul from Simple Wi-Fi, and in this video, we're gonna cover the PiFi Outdoor Wi-Fi Extender. Let's talk about what the PiFi Outdoor Wi-Fi Extender is. The idea here is you're grabbing internet directly from your inside router and bypassing all the walls and building materials by feeding it via 100 feet of ethernet cable directly out to an outdoor access point. An access point is basically a specialized router. It's grabbing internet from inside and feeding it to the outside in order to broadcast with the best potential strength. Using a combination of different antenna options that we offer on our website, you can use the signal coming from the access point to focus in on one direction or broadcast with very far open 360 reach or better speeds with closer reach. We'll talk about that later in the video. The first thing we're gonna to touch on is your cable configuration and how signal comes from the inside to the outside. Like I mentioned earlier, signal comes directly from your inside router. You don't need to configure your inside router to communicate with the access point outside. All you need to do is plug directly into the back of the router via one of the open LAN ports. Kind of all those four jacks that you have there that are, look like big phone uh, ports, that's what you want to plug this ethernet cable into. Now, following from the inside out, in the middle you have a PoE. This white box is a power over ethernet supply. This provides power and data between the router and the access point. In order to get data and power between the two locations, every kit comes with two ethernet cables a short one and a long one. The short three foot cable plugs directly into the back of your router and comes into the PoE via the LAN port. This is where data is feeding the access point outside. Now to get power and data out to the access point, we include 100 feet of ethernet cable which plugs directly into the PoE port. The PoE comes from the box inside into the bottom of the access point outside. This is how data and internet and power is traveling back and forth between the outdoors and your indoors. So like I mentioned earlier, we have a couple different options for radiating the signal outdoors. The first kit and the one that comes with all options is the WIP option. Every access point comes with two omnidirectional antennas. This is good if you want to cover up to about 30 to 40 yards max of internet coverage in your backyard. Now this is a 360 up and down, so if you have a two-story home, you might want to go with this one if you want to go up to about 20 yards. But if you have a one-story home and you want to try to reach a little bit further or maybe to the front for a video camera or some sort of device that might need it on the front of the house or the side of the house, these are great options. The next step in omnidirectional coverage is the 11 dBi Omni. However, there's a trade-off. In order to get signal further away from the access point in the 360, the signal actually flattens. So your vertical radiation pattern is going to be less than the smaller Omni in order to get more coverage to the left and right at a further distance. So keep that in mind when you're choosing between the standard Omni or the large Omni. And lastly, for the furthest reaching antenna, you want to go with a 14 dBi directional Yagi. That means you have to point this antenna directly at where you want Wi-Fi to receive and transmit. So this is great if you have a Pi-Fi at another location, like a, like a standalone structure, like a barn or a metal shed, or if you have a Wi-Fi camera at a gate or a specific location where you want coverage at one point. Wherever you point this antenna is where you're gonna get coverage. Outside of that 32 degree radiation cone, you're not gonna see any signal. You might see weak, but the strongest potential is gonna be right inside that radiation cone. So keep this in mind when you're choosing between your different antenna options, what is right for you. Let's go step by step and make all the connections so you understand what's going on in your PiFi Outdoor Wi-Fi Extender Kit. Let's go from the inside out. First, you have your home router. So this router represents whatever, whatever is inside your home or office. And like I mentioned earlier, you have four ethernet ports. First thing you'll wanna do is grab the short ethernet cable and plug it into one of the open ports on your router. It doesn't matter which one, so long as it's not the WAN or the internet port. This now connects to the PoE on the LAN port. This is how data comes from your home router to the access point. You don't have to do anything to your home router or notify your ISP or do any special configurations. Internet is coming off of the back of that ethernet port and you're just passing it along to the outdoor access point. Now you grab your long cable and plug it into the PoE port on your PoE. 
This is how power and data goes to the access point. You gotta give power to the PoE, and this goes to your wall outlet. Since power is coming over the ethernet cable, no power is needed at the access point. Everything comes from inside at the router location. Once your long cable makes it all the way outside, you open up the bottom of the, P of the access point and plug it directly in to the weather enclosure. The cable has a nice little slot so that this is a nice sealed uh, access point, nice sealed router so that water does not get in. Close it off and you're done. Now, with this access point, like we talked about earlier, you can use different antennas and we'll cover how to set that up in a moment. Now let's get outside. As you can see, you have the access point with the whips installed mounted to a pole. This is on a tripod, which is also available on the website, but most often you're gonna use this on a J pole or some existing mast at your home. The idea here is to get the access point with the best visual line of sight to the area where you wanna have coverage. For this example, this pole is kind of long, but you never wanna have the pole very close to the antennas. It's very important that ideally, you wanna have the top of your pole or your mast or your wall cut off at the base of the antennas. If an antenna is too close to metal, the metal starts to deform the radiation pattern coming off the antenna. This is just for example. As you can see, I have the whip option here with two 5 dBi omnidirectional antennas. Now, this coverage is gonna be great up and down, left and right, as opposed to the larger omni, which is gonna be great just left and right. This is good if you have a pool area, a backyard, or just a really close area where you just wanna get coverage around, up and down. So if you have a two-story home, this is ideal. If you have a one-story home but wanna get out to the front of it, this is also possi possibly a good option. Now for increased omnidirectional coverage, we've upgraded to the 11 dBi Omni. Every 11 dBi Omni kit or expansion kit on the outdoor Pi-Fi extender comes with a pigtail, a coaxial pigtail, that connects to the access point and to the antenna. It's 18 inches, so allow for flexibility in mounting. The idea here is that you can mount this in the best optimal situation so that the large antenna is cut off at the base of your pole. Again, this is just for example, but if this was a real world scenario, I would mount this antenna just below the, the, the cutoff of the pole and the access point would be the one to take a little bit of a hit in terms of optimal coverage so that we can provide space and best radiation for the large antenna. The top of the access point comes with an SMA connector. The other end is N. As long as you have that connection squared away, which is a fat connector goes to the outside and the SMA goes to the access point, you'll be good to go. It doesn't matter which port on the access point you connect your coaxial cable to. For the furthest reaching coverage, the 14 dBi directional Yagi is the best way to get point-to-point -point coverage for one camera, for one location, for one Pi-Fi repeater at a faraway distance. As a bonus, because this access point has two ports, you're still getting some coverage in the local area. So you're still gonna get some omnidirectional coverage nearby, but the bulk of the signal is gonna be pointing directly at the, at the location where you point the antenna, 32 degrees left and right. Now for mounting this since, this, since this antenna is directional as opposed to the omnidirectional that can actually see this, uh, this pole, this pole does not affect the antenna as much as the omni. So you can put this antenna below or above whatever is right for you. Okay, now that we've made all of our physical connections, everything is powered up and running, it's time to configure your access point. So what I've done here is created a router uh, simulation so that it's like a router inside your home. This has to have internet. You have to provide internet to the access point when you're setting this up. So again, short cable from one of the ethernet ports in your router inside to the LAN port on your PoE. And then on the PoE port of your PoE, is labeled PoE, so I know it's kind of confusing. That's what's feeding your access point outside. So once you've got all that set up, now you want to take a laptop or a tablet or a mobile phone with a web browser and connect to the access point SSID, which is typically some 
variation of TP Link and the frequency 2.4 and maybe a model number or something like that. So you want to look for that new network. So you go to your Wi Fi settings, and this is TP Link 2.4 gigahertz with the SSID, uh, with the MAC ID or serial number ID. So we're going to connect to it. and connected. So right now, this system has internet. And that's because it's already plugged into your home router. If you wanted to leave this network as TP-Link and open, then it's up to you. But you're gonna be vulnerable to people hacking you and stuff like that. So it's always good to set this up with your own SSID, or you can have one of our tech support agents do this prior to shipping. If you wanted to set this up with your own SSID, this is what you would need to do. You open up a web browser, and remember, you already have internet now, so that's why my web page is loading up. But you would go to tplink.eap.net. All right, you gotta create your SSID and password, but by default, this is admin, admin, And here is gonna prompt you to provide a new username. So you can just leave it as admin for now, and for password, we'll use simple Wi-Fi, simple Wi-Fi, okay? Now you wanna definitely make this stronger, this is just for the video. Okay, so once you've got to the TP-Link setup page, you wanna go under wireless, and here's your SSID. You click this little button here, edit, and you can change this to whatever you want. So PiFi, PiFi base station video. And I'm gonna put a security mode of WPA-PSK and change that to all lowercase simple Wi-Fi. Press okay. Now give it about a second or so, or really about a minute for the system to reboot. You'll know it's done rebooting. Uh, typically there's some sort of prompt that tells you to reconnect. You can see my wireless here just disconnected. And if we wait another five seconds, we should be able to see the new SSID we just created, PiFi Base Station Video. We can connect to it, simple Wi-Fi, hit next. I'll choose no, and I'm connected to the internet. It's that simple. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please press like down below or, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos coming up. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to contact us at support at simplewifi.com or give us a call to speak to one of our USA-based tech support agents. Thanks.